morning, YouTube. Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Not much time on my end again, but we have a pretty notable severe weather threat this afternoon as we have an enhanced risk as shown up here. And all hazards are possible. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. As I'm doing that, make sure you're hitting that like button, smashing that subscribe button, also getting that bell on, and also share this video. This will be important to anyone that's in the path of these storms today. That being said here, everything is up to enhanced risk criteria, including the tornado threat where we have a 10% area. This is not hatched, but there is a possibility that it could evolve into a hash risk here. This is just east of Pueblo here, south of Denver. This is mainly in an uh, area where there's not any major population, but there are still towns here. So we definitely need to be watching this today. We will be live later this afternoon. And then also the wind threat is very notable as well. There is a hatched risk with that. This is to the east of Pueblo. This includes uh, Liberal Kansas, Garden City, Woodward, Oklahoma. Got to watch out for the possibility of 70 plus mile per hour winds within this area particularly. Let's not forget the areas that are in the slight risk as well as sheared, such as seared in uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, Casper, Cheyenne, McCook, Nebraska, Colby, Kansas, Denver, you're in there as well. And we're just north of Amarillo, so you guys have to be on the lookout. You could end up in the slight risk possibly. Also, the hail threat is very notable as well. We have our 30% enhanced risk for hail over here towards Denver and Pueblo. And then our hatch risk even extends from uh, Sheridan all the way to the north of Amarillo. Also have, of course, the other areas that we were talking about earlier, Woodward, Liberal, Garden City, Colby, McCook, and Rapid City. Rapid City, you're actually in that hatch risk, so you can see hail above two inches in diameter, or gorilla hail, as a lot of us are calling it. So that's what we have going on with the uh, outlook for Sphere today. When we look at the 200s here, seeing divergence off to the west here that's what we're seeing with this part of the setup here as this little miniature trough begins to dig in and this actually will lead to an even more dangerous setup as we head into friday but today later in the evening we could start to see a few tornadoes pop up as a result of this this is mainly just a severe sounding here but there could be enough low level kinematics to where a tornado threat can't be ruled out it's not super impressive today. Like I said, tomorrow's really going to be the more impressive setup, but nonetheless, it definitely has to be watched closely. Lapse rates are also very high, so hail potential is going to be through the roof. And our D cape has hit that 1,000 plus joules per kilogram threshold. So, like I said, all hazards really are possible here, but for this particular sounding, mainly leaning towards uh, wind and hail. We will probably end up popping up a tornado sounding here eventually, though as we go through this video. Don't want to try too hard because like I said, I'm short on time. But this is looking at 200 millibars here. Setup looks pretty uh, solid for severe weather. Really, like I said, this is really gonna set the stage for tomorrow's severe event. So we'll probably be going live for that too. Also, taking a look at the 500, things looking pretty robust here as we head later into the evening with this setup as well. This is just south of Denver and to the east of Pueblo. This is probably where I would expect to see tour soundings, and there you go. Told you it wouldn't take long. Like I said, it's a pretty good setup across the board here. We've hit uh, a little bit past 800, getting into the 900s here on D-Cape, so damaging one potential is also still pretty high, though it hasn't quite hit that 1,000 joule per kilogram threshold. Also, lapse rates are pretty solid here with uh, 7s and 8s across the board. And there's, of course, other parameters that we're looking at, particularly um, what catches my eye a lot is the uh, lift index being at a negative seven. Usually a negative four will be sufficient enough for tornadic development. We're a little bit higher than that. That being said here, it's not the craziest uh, setup kinematically, but we're definitely better looking than we were yesterday. Already up to about maybe... 20 knots on the low level here so again definitely uh, not a zero percent or two percent or kind of day that being said we'll drag this forward a little bit more to about maybe 05z which would be I would say a little bit after about 10 or 11 o'clock maybe mountain and central time things will start to slow down of course we have to watch tomorrow's setup video will be up on that in the morning tomorrow 
So looking at all other levels of the atmosphere, it's a pretty similar deal across the board here. Short wave looks a little bit meager in comparison to some of the other setups we've seen, but again, we have to watch towards this region right here on the eastern flank of that where maybe we could get some things going here. This is one of the better soundings I've seen, but the only issue with this is, or better photographs I've seen, only problem is a lot of convective inhibition. See that negative 216 is a little hard to see, but this will try to inhibit the storms from developing. Cap kind of builds back as we get later into the evening, but if this were to come into fruition here, oh man, could be some big problems here. If the cap sorts of dissolve, if the cap dissolves by any sort, we could have a problem. But that shows the potential for today and really is giving us a little bit of a uh, spoiler almost in a way for what tomorrow could be. But anyway, last thing to look at here with the winds will be the low levels. Probably going to see a pretty notable ramp up as we get past the mountains here, especially as we go past O2 into O3Z here. Up to about 40 knots, which is usually a telltale sign that severe weather potential is on the increase here. We are at about 41 to 42 knots. And there we go, similar similar setup across the board here. Like I said, this is really setting the stage for tomorrow here. I'm really interested as to what I may see. And some of these indexes are crazy here, like the supercell index at 50, that's, a, that's impressive. But again, with tonight's setup, convective inhibition or a cap will be in place later in the evening. So this may not happen. If it does, oh wow. <laughs> or this may not uh, correlate into a tornado threat, I should say. But now that we've taken a look at that, let's quickly look at the moisture returns. There is a little moisture nose that does pop up later into the evening, which I find interesting. At first, the moisture doesn't really get there until late. The timing of that is interesting. Any sort of lifting mechanism that may move that cap, though, has to be watched extra close. Plenty of instability, especially towards the surface with this setup, and decent low-level shear. Like I said, low-level shear will actually increase more towards the evening. If it can beat out that cap that's going to develop, we could see some. We could see some very strong tornadoes even. So there could even be potential that this gets upgraded to a 10% hatched which would mean a threat for significant tornadoes exist. So definitely something to keep an extra close eye on here. So now that we've looked at that, let's take a look at a couple of parameters here. We're kind of short on time, so I'm not going to be able to look at everything like I would like to. Besides, that would make a two hour long video probably. But um, like I said, mixed layer cape, surface cape is going to be high with this setup. As we head into the evening, it isn't really until about 04 or 05Z, like I said before, where we start to lose some of that instability. And even then, storms do look like they could hold out for a little bit, probably below severe limits. Also, check out the lapse rates here, so that way we can get a look at hail potential and tornado potential. As we head into the uh, evening hours, look at how high some of these get here. We're getting some, we're easily getting some 8 degrees Celsius. Lapse rates are pretty steep. So have to be on the lookout for a very large hail earlier in the day. Then last but not least, I'm gonna have to skip a lot of these and just go right to the uh, reflectivity map here. I'm gonna go ahead and shift it over to regional mode so that we can get a better look. Go with central today. So as so we continue to go forward here, storms will probably start to initiate just around eight o'clock. It's perfect timing for me because I'll be well off of work by that point or at least eight o'clock eastern time so we'll probably get to see some pretty good storms on stream as well which would be good and then even some big ones over towards wyoming we could also see maybe some damaging ones there because that does have a look of a tiny little uh, line segment with a bow out if that ends up coming to fruition some damaging ones could even be possible as far as uh, northwestern nebraska but a few supercells look like they're possible these can break through the cap later into the evening here. This, these could have some uh, pretty notable tornado potential as well. And then we'll watch this form into an MCS and then clear its way out by morning. 
But that's all I got for you guys. Again, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also hit that share button. But anyways, I'm going to run off to work here. This has been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. I'll see you guys in the next video. It'll probably be this afternoon, most likely a live stream. Until then, take care and have a nice day.